Hi, welcome to the Maestro 11 Quick Start Guide. In this video, we'll explore the new Maestro interface using an example protein factor 10A to highlight some of the cool new features and usability improvements. We'll only cover a handful of features, but hopefully it'll be enough to give you a quick sense of how to navigate the interface so you can get up and running fairly quickly. Let's begin. We'll start by downloading the factor 10A protein from the PDB by going to File, Get PDB, then typing 1FJS and selecting download. Note that we could have also used file import structures to import the structure manually. Now notice the banner notification that appeared when the raw PDB was imported. Not only is it giving us information that the PDB was imported successfully, but it has also recognized that the likely next step is to prepare the protein. This is indeed needed for subsequent modeling tasks, so let's click prepare. And up comes the protein preparation wizard. Now we have a separate video covering the protein preparation in much greater detail, so please check that out or see a link in the description, but otherwise let's proceed with the standard defaults. We'll click pre-process. Now it looks like there is a steric clash caused by a couple of overlapping atoms. These should be resolved in the subsequent H-bond optimization and minimization steps, so let's just continue for now. Over in the review and modify tab, we'll remove all of the non-important heteroatoms like glycerol, and then just leave the factor 10A ligand, which has the residue code Z34. Next, we'll click Optimize to optimize the H-bond network. Now that's done, we'll click Minimize to alleviate any minor steric clashes. Again, more details about the protein preparation can be found in the protein preparation video. Now that we have a prepared protein, let's explore the new interface starting with the selection toolbar. So in order to select atoms, let's set the pick level, defined by this button here, to atoms, then click on an atom or multiple atoms to select them. And notice that only the atoms that are picked are selected. If we change the pick level to, say, residues, first notice the predictive highlighting is lighting up the atoms that will be selected, and that clicking on just one atom will select all atoms that make up the full residue. Let's try the same with chains and note that the chain is selected, and molecules. Let's select the ligand molecule, and note that the molecule is selected. Now, a pro tip is to use the keyboard shortcuts to quickly switch between different picking levels. So notice the cursor has the M letter symbol, indicating that I'm in the molecule picking level. If I wanted to switch to, say, the atom picking level, I simply need to press A on the keyboard, and notice that the cursor has changed to A, for picking atoms. Same goes for pressing C for chains, E for entry, and R for residue. Now over here, the plus and minus buttons put you in either additive or subtractive picking mode. For example, turning on additive picking allows you to keep selecting atoms without having to hold down the shift key. And there are also these quick select buttons, P for protein, L for ligand, and S for solvent as well as a few other common objects and atom sets like selecting binding sites, either with or without the associated ligand. This is uh, equivalent to selecting the ligand by clicking L and then clicking the expand button over here and choosing within five angstrom radius. And of course, you can select everything by clicking all or clear selections by clicking the clear selection button or just clicking into an empty area of the workspace. Okay, now that we know how to make selections, let's act on those selections by exploring the style toolbox and starting with adding labels and ribbons. First, let's label the ligand. We'll click L to select the ligand. Then we'll open the style toolbox. Ensure that the apply labels split button is set to residue information and then click apply labels. Now to show ribbons on the protein, we'll click P in the quick select area to select the protein then open the style toolbox and click ribbons. Note that it's currently colored by residue position and styled as a ribbon, but these can be edited if needed, for example, to be colored by secondary structure or by chain name. You can also edit the ribbon at any time by first hovering the cursor over the ribbon until the ribbon cursor appears, and then right-clicking to reveal the edit ribbon pop-up. Finally, notice down in the workspace configuration toolbar that the mute buttons for labels and ribbons are now on. 
These toggles can be used to temporarily hide or show the objects at any time. We'll now use the visibility button in the style toolbox to hide and show selected atoms in the workspace. Let's hide the protein first by clicking P, then over in the style toolbox, we'll click the display undisplay visibility toggle eyeball. Clicking this button multiple times alternates between hiding and showing the selected atoms. Next, we'll only show the binding site atoms by choosing binding site plus ligand from the quick select area. And then over in the style toolbox, we'll click display only selected atoms. Hiding and showing hydrogen atoms is also done from the style toolbox. Click the show only polar hydrogens button. This button will hide the non-polar hydrogens if they are shown, as well as show the polar hydrogens if they aren't already shown. Also, note the arrow next to the button to open a menu for hiding or showing all hydrogens. Now the fit buttons on the selection toolbar are used to view specific areas of the 3D workspace. For example, clicking L will fit the view to the ligand. Clicking the fit to workspace button will fit to all visible objects in the workspace. And now if we have a few atoms selected, the fit to selection button will fit to just those atoms selected. Now another pro tip is to use the L and Z keys on the keyboard as they perform the same kinds of fitting functionality. The L key is to fit the ligand, the Z key is to fit to the workspace or to whatever is selected. Now you sometimes might encounter situations where a structure is in the workspace but out of view. I'll simulate this by right click dragging the structure off screen and then command control left click the inclusion icon to simulate including the entry. Notice the structure is still off screen. This is where pressing the fit to workspace or hitting the Z key on the keyboard will fit the view back on the structure. Or if the auto toggle in the fit area is switched on, re-including the entry will fit to all visible atoms automatically. Furthermore, if the automatic fitting to ligand is turned on, including the entry will automatically fit to the ligand. Next, let's style the ligand. We'll click the quick select L, then over in the style toolbox, we can choose from a variety of styling options. Here we'll choose ball and stick, and change the color scheme to element custom ligand and selecting a color from the secondary menu. Now actually a quicker way to style the workspace and focus on the binding site is simply to click the preset button. This applies a custom preset where in this case it automatically styles the ligand in ball and stick, shows the residues in the binding site styled in wire, adds residue information as labels, shows the ribbons on the protein and zooms in on the binding site. This is obviously extremely convenient and clearly much quicker than manually styling the various structures repeatedly. And if you open the preset menu next to the button, you can customize the presets. As well as apply other useful presets. And there's also an option here to have the custom preset applied every time the workspace changes. In the lower left, we have the new structure hierarchy. This is used for reviewing, finding, as well as styling the structures in the 3D workspace. If we click the arrow next to 1FJS, we can expand to view the contents. Within ligands, we can view the ligand name. We can click on it to select the ligand in the workspace. And double clicking on it will fit the view as well. Under solvents, we can see the waters folder, which contains all of the water molecules. Now, if we click the plus sign on the right, we'll open a local style toolbox. And here we can quickly access the various styling options. So here, let's style the waters by CPK. Now on the left, we have a visibility toggle to hide and show specific structures in the workspace. So for example, if we expand the protein folder, we can see that all residues in chain L are hidden because the toggle is unchecked. While for chain A, we can see that it's partially checked, represented by the blue triangle, meaning that only some residues in chain A are shown. So to show all structures, simply click the toggle. Let's hit the preset button now. Again, this will apply the default custom preset and focus on the ligand. Now let's use the interactions pane on the workspace configuration toolbar to visualize non-covalent interactions. First, we'll hover over the interactions toggle until the more button appears and then click on it to open the interactions pane. 
Here we can show the non-covalent bonds like hydrogen bonds, halogen bonds, salt bridges, and aromatic H bonds, and we can restrict the interactions to only those between the ligand and the receptor. We can also show pi interactions like pi pi stacking and pi cation. And if we want, we can also show good, bad, or ugly contacts and clashes. Here we'll just show the ugly clashes if there are any. Now there are a few ways we can make measurements. If we click the measure button on the favorites toolbar, we'll see the measurements banner, which has a set of instructions for us to follow. So if we want to measure a distance, we need to pick any two atoms. Another way to measure is to first select the atoms and then right click to open the context menu with options to make the measurement. Notice now that the measurement toggle in the workspace configuration toolbar is now on. Again, we can hide or show the measurements and access the measurements pane where we can review the measurements. Now let's add a surface to the binding site. Let's quick select the binding site, head over to the style toolbox and click surface. Now, by the way, there are more advanced surface options available from the workspace surface menu. To modify the surface display options, first hover the cursor over the surface until you see the surface cursor. Then right click and choose display options. In this example, let's set the transparency to 30% and color scheme to electrostatic potential. And again, just like ribbons and measurements, the surface can be hidden or shown via the surface toggle on the workspace configuration toolbar. Now throughout the workspace, there are a number of gadgets that will appear to offer extra information about the structure in the workspace. For example, in the top left, we can click the workspace properties to open the change workspace properties dialog. While in the lower left, we have the 2D overlay, which shows the 2D structure of the workspace ligand. Double clicking the image will also zoom in on the ligand and right clicking will reveal options like viewing the ligand interactions diagram. Now these gadgets are all controlled in the lower right with the plus button to open the workspace configuration panel. Here you can toggle on or off the various workspace gadgets like the workspace properties and 2D overlay and also the sequence viewer and clipping planes among other gadgets. Now let's explore ways to modify different properties. Now remember there were two chains in the protein, chains A and chain L. Suppose we wanted to rename chain L to chain B. To do this, first let's select chain L, then click the build button on the selection toolbar. This opens the 3D builder where we can modify the structure and make edits. So over in the other edits, let's choose change other properties and then type the letter B in the chain name field and click apply. We now have chains A and chain B. So while we have the 3D builder up, let's explore ways we can use it to edit the ligand structure. First, let's select the ligand. Another way to do this is to double click on the ligand while in atom selection mode. Then rather than modify this ligand, we'll click the create entry from selected atoms to make a copy of the ligand as its own entry. We'll name the entry 1FJS ligand. Then we'll duplicate the entry by clicking the duplicate entry button so we can use this as a template to make modifications. Now, unlike in classic Maestro, the new Maestro interface uses a select first paradigm. For example, to delete atoms, we first select the atoms we wish to delete, and then we click delete button. Similarly, to change elements, first select the atoms, then choose the new element. Or make substitutions by selecting attachment points and choosing a fragment from the add fragments. Notice that when fragments are added, we may see an option to edit the fragment, such as changing the connection point or to perform a rotation. And finally, another way to modify the ligand is to use the 2D sketcher. This can be accessed from the 2D overlay or the edit menu. All right, so that's a fairly quick run through of some of the features in the new Maestro. Perhaps the last feature worth mentioning here is the new task tool. So in the new Maestro, all tasks, scripts, tools, and applications have been consolidated here in the new task tool. Click the task button and then hover over browse to view the lists of tasks and applications. Clicking on an item will open a category of tools or a particular application specific to the workflow. For example, clicking receptor-based virtual screening reveals the various applications and scripts used in receptor-based virtual screening like the various docking applications. You can also search for applications by typing in a keyword. Suggested keywords may appear below the field, but otherwise hit enter to run the search. 
and at any time, items can be favored by clicking the empty star to the left. It will turn bright yellow and the name will appear as a button on the favorites toolbar for one click access. Finally, note that the recently opened tasks will appear in the recents lists also for easy access. For more information about the new Maestro, head over to schrodinger.com slash maestro11. There you'll find plenty of training resources, reference guides, webinars, and a collection of other training videos. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to email help at schrodinger.com.